Truly an inspiration, Dr. Linda Babalal has followed the path which many are called to, but only few are chosen. A pioneer in her own regard, she was the first woman to hold the office of President of the Senate and the first to act as President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I was indeed very uh, excited and very honored when I was asked to uh, assumed that position as president of the Senate and uh, the the whole idea of being the first woman of the president of the Senate uh, really dawned on me the importance of that when other women sort of came to me and said how honored they were and how they felt that I was breaking ground for other women. I spent the first five years of my life in Superior because my father was um, manager of colonial life in Superior and then we moved to Guyana for about two years when he moved there as manager of colonial life over there. And then we came to Barataria. Uh, as the eldest, I was expected to take on a lot of responsibility uh, work with my younger ones. I had to make sure they were okay, that they went to school. When they went to school, they were well looked after. Um, because I was going to be a doctor, I looked after them when they got scrapes and bruises and, you know, that kind of thing. But we had a good family life. My mother had a great influence on, on us, all of us, and on me. Um, if to, you know, uh, certainly by teaching us the things that we needed to know, like cooking and sewing and cleaning and all that kind of thing. But from the political point of view, it was my father. He was very much a political person. I remember as early as 10 years of age, he would take me campaigning. He was always campaigning for somebody. And in those days, you went on trucks and they drove the trucks all around and you know you'd be there chanting and so that I had that experience from very early. My mom has inspired us on all levels of our life. Um, I have two sisters and two brothers and she's been there for us, she's been guiding us all through since from the time we've been born on every level. Everything mom does, she does well. So in other words you don't, if you're going to do something, do it properly. If you're going to be a wife, do it properly. If you're going to be a mother, you do it properly. You're working, you're cleaning, you're writing an essay, you do it properly. It was a delicate balance to, to maintain that, that um, equilibrium between being a, a wife, a mother, a doctor, a advisor, and many other things. It, had, it was a lot of juggling, as you say, but it was a very delicate balance. After attending Manitoba University, Dr. Babalal graduated from the Royal College of Surgeons and Physicians in Dublin, Ireland, and worked extensively in both the public and the private sectors in Trinidad and Tobago. Linda is a very, very charitable person because she took all of her spare time and helped in social work and charity work. Um, she did well in, in helping the, the Mount St. Benedict Drug Habilitation Center where she gave a lot of her free time and this was the sort of person that she was. Linda, firstly as a professional woman, a doctor and a politician would have been going around this country every day. She would have been coming upon all the vagrants we have, the drug addicts and all of that. In her sense of community and involvement in the society, she felt the need to help and she gave of her very best with a limited time. Social development I really liked because again you were dealing there with the uh, socially deprived, you know, the elderly, the uh, disabled, the addicts um, and uh, so I enjoyed that part of it very, very much. I remember so many times I would go to the Minister of Finance and say, listen, we need to do this. We need day daycare centers for the elderly. We need remand homes for the, you know, the um, juvenile delinquents. And he would tell me we don't have the money. So that it was frustrating. It was frustrating. Um, I felt that there was so much we could have done. A lot of things that we had planned to do, a lot of the plans that we had in the ministry, we were not able to really put in place, you know, they just remained as plans and we were just able to do the day-to-day -day things like pay old age pensions, disability grants and, you know, things like that. I continued what Mr. John Eckstein had began to put in place and that was the whole 
um, regional, regionalization of health, you know, into the different regions. I was beginning to meet with the doctors, and I think I was having good rapport with the doctors. Matter of fact, many of them said to me afterwards that uh, maybe if I had still been there at the time, we would have gotten things fixed with the doctors faster than we did. Because maybe being a doctor myself, I understood and they understood where I was coming from, so that I was getting, you know, somewhere. From 1992 to 1995, Dr. Babalal, as Member of Parliament for Bharataria San Juan, held ministerial portfolios responsible for social development and health. To the 1991 election, Dr. Babalal played an important role. She was a very important platform speaker. Um, and, of course, you know, after winning the election, she won the, the San Juan Baratari estate had served as minister in the two portfolios. And even after that, you know, she be, became the chairman of the party. So that was the confidence that the party had in her. Okay, not only serving as a minister of government, but as chairman of the party in the period um, 1995 to, well, I think it was 2001, somewhere around there. And then even after that, she was made president of the Senate. So that indicated the confidence with which the, 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 the party was to know. She conducted herself at the President of the Senate in a very astute manner. And whenever she acted as um, president, acting president of the country, being the president of the Senate, whenever the, the president is out of the country, she had to act in the role as um, acting president. Dr. Linda Babalal served consecutive terms as president of the Senate for both the seventh and eighth Republican parliaments, exhibiting a commanding presence of dignity and fortitude, charting an exemplary course for many to follow. She has left a legacy of a very different kind, her graciousness in dealing with senators. I was a member of the Senate when she served as president for all these years. So I think um, she has be remained in my mind and the mind of many other senators as a very remarkable person because she understood the standing orders, but she always mixed the execution of those standing orders in calling members to discipline without damaging their dignity and their self-respect. I tried my best at all times to be impartial, to give the opposition their full opportunity to speak, even if I had to pull them up afterwards or or disagree with what they were saying, but I let them have their say. And I felt in doing so that um, I was doing my job in the right way. I think the opposition should be very grateful for the role that she played in securing a balance between the powers that the government has and the rights of the opposition to give an alternative view at all times. So she would instruct us um, in a very modest, quiet way and uh, we began to respect her for that. In that, um, we were brought back in line with the standing orders through her instruction. And the way she did it, um, uh, with a quiet grace, but with some affection and respect for the role that all senators, government senators, um, opposition senators, and independent senators have to play. So we remember her presidency as one of quiet efficiency. Acting as the president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, that was, of course, a great honor. And I enjoyed it. It was such a wonderful experience. Um, you know, a large part of the office of the president is really social. You've got to inter intermingle and meet with people of all stations. You've got to go to all kinds of functions. And I really enjoy that. I love meeting people. So I enjoyed that. I think um, as, I, as she's a woman, it means in a man's world that she has excelled to become president of the Senate and president of Trinidad and Tobago. Even if it's an acting position, you are in the highest positions of the land. And to come from humble beginnings, to be able to hold stations like that, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to us, it's inspiring to the people of this country, to our children who believe now they can do anything. There's nothing and nobody to hold you back once you want to do something. Linda is a all around a very, very balanced person. She has always, to me, I know her as always having a head on her shoulders. 
is a very cool, calm, committed, dedicated person. But when she puts her mind to something, she gets it done. And I think this is how she has been very successful. She has lovely children, husbands, so she's a fantastic wife, caring mother, a good politician. She has lived a balanced life and she has been very successful in everything that she has touched. People remember her. They still speak silently about her. She is no longer in full public coverage. But um, the legacy she has left both as acting president and from my observations as a senator in her time, in the Senate, um, that legacy is well remembered. Women have a big contribution to make to politics. I think we bring something that's different from the men. Maybe it's the little bit of emotional touch that we bring, whatever it is, we need more women who are really committed and who want to give of themselves to public life. Because when you enter politics, you are really serving your country. Up to today, people come to me as patients. I don't know them. I'm meeting them for the first time. And when they are leaving, sometimes they will turn around to me and say, thank you for serving our country. And that to me is the, is the biggest reward that I can get, that somebody can say, but I don't even know, but that they know me and they, they can turn around to me and say thank you for giving service to my country because that's really what I wanted to do all the time. And obviously it has was seen as that. So I would say to women, you want to serve your country? Please, it's the biggest service, it's the highest service that you could give, service to your country.